In this video, I'll chat about the gift that keeps on giving, herpes virus. No, not that herpes virus, cat herpes virus. Symptoms, diagnostics, treatment, and prevention. So let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Oz. If you've ever seen your cat sneezing with red eyes and goopy discharge, you have probably met herpes virus up close and personal. The easiest way to think of feline herpes virus is this. It's a cat version of our common cold. And if you want to sound fancy, you can refer to it by its official name, feline viral rhinotracheitis. To some of you, that may look familiar. That's where the letters F, V, and R in the FVRCP vaccine comes from. The vaccine that every cat gets that is oftentimes incorrectly referred to as the distemper shot. As with most herpes viruses, they are species specific, which means only cats, both big and small, can get it. If your cat has herpes virus, they will not infect you or any other non-cat pets in the household. Most cats are exposed to herpes virus in their lifetime, especially during the kitten months. Herpes virus is the leading cause of upper respiratory infections in cats. You are probably already familiar with the classic symptoms such as sneezing, eye nose discharge, conjunctivitis, squinting, and congestion. In severe cases, symptoms may also include a fever, decreased appetite, and lethargy. When you have a cold or flu, sometimes your glands get big. Same with a cat. Some cats get an ulcer on their cornea. If you've ever noticed a cat with a white scar on their cornea, they probably had a herpes virus infection when they were a kitten. And if that herpes virus moves to the lower respiratory tract, that may cause your cat to cough. This virus is everywhere. Think of how cold spread between humans. It's the same with cats. I nose discharge, saliva, sneezing, it's all fair game. We don't need direct contact from an infected cat. The virus can survive on things like food and water dishes, furniture, clothing, bedding, and toys. As long as the infected secretions remain moist on these objects, the virus can survive. Once these infected secretions dry up, the risk is essentially over. After exposure, it can take two to five days before symptoms appear, and your cat can be unwell for a good two to three weeks. They are contagious the whole time they are sneezing or you notice discharge from the eyes or nose. The best defense against herpes virus is a good, strong immune system. That's why kittens are so susceptible because their immune systems are just developing. Never ignore this in a young kitten. A severe herpes virus infection can result in losing an eye and even death. Older cats are also susceptible, especially if their immune system is stressed. Immunocompromised cats, like cats with FIV, Cats on immunosuppressive medications like steroids or cats with long-term illnesses are at an increased risk. Here's the annoying thing about herpes virus and the reason for the gift that keeps on giving comment at the beginning of the video. If your cat had a previous herpes virus infection, especially when they were a kitten, the virus can come back at any time, usually when your cat is stressed. The virus hangs out in the nerves in your cat's head and if conditions are right, a flare-up can occur. For those of you with a chronic herpes virus cat, I don't need to tell you when that virus will resurface. Holidays, vacations, introducing a new pet, boarding your cat, and sometimes when you are stressed. So how do we diagnose herpes virus in a cat? Here's my general rule. If your cat has mild upper respiratory symptoms, I assume it's herpes virus until proven otherwise. Lab tests can be a waste of time and money. Since the virus is so common, many cats will test positive even if the virus is not causing the symptoms. So if the symptoms are mild and classic, I assume herpes virus and begin treatment. So how do we treat a herpes virus infection? Since herpes virus is a virus, antibiotics do not treat an uncomplicated herpes virus infection. If your cat is sneezing and the discharge from the eyes and nose is clear, supportive care is all that is needed. Think about what you do when you have a mild cold. Chicken soup, crackers, toast, Sprite. You do this until your immune system gets the upper hand and you start to feel better. I think the hardest part in an uncomplicated herpes virus infection is that we as cat parents want to do something, anything to make our little angels feel better so they go back to driving us crazy with their cat antics. If everything else is normal, give your cat's immune system time to do its job. It's hard. If we could just ask them a question like, how do you feel? This would be so much easier. When you have a cold, you know. You've felt like this in the past, you've been through it before, you know you're gonna feel better in a few days. 
We don't have that luxury in cats, and your mind goes to the worst possible scenario. There is no cure, only management, and mild symptoms like sneezing and clear discharge is treated with supportive care. Good nutrition, good hydration. Getting your cat hydrated and keeping them that way can make all the difference. Since you can't force your cat to drink more water, feed them more canned food and add water to the diet. Your vet may recommend giving fluids under the skin. Things can get complicated and that clear discharge can become thick with a yellow, green, or white color. Now we have a secondary bacterial infection and now is the time to treat with antibiotics, either with an eye drop or an oral antibiotic. Sometimes I also reach for an antibiotic in a cat that has a really high fever, has been lethargic for a few days, has a decreased appetite, or is really congested. This is not a hard fast rule and I make this determination on a case by case basis. Is your cat congested? Nebulization can help. An inexpensive way to do this is to put your cat in a small bathroom with hot water coming out of the shower head. The room needs to be really steamy and 10 to 15 minutes should do the trick. The goal here is to have your cat sneeze out all that thick, disgusting mucus all over your bathroom walls. Let's chat about a controversial treatment. Back in the day, any cat that had herpes virus was treated with L-lysine. It flowed like water for any cat that was sneezing or had clear discharge from the eyes or nose. Vets were happy. Clients were happy because they were actively doing something for their cat with a mild cold instead of just watching and waiting. Life was good. A few years ago, scientific studies started to come out showing L-lysine really didn't do much for cats with herpes virus. I was honest with my clients. Cat parents didn't agree. They said L-lysine made a huge difference in their cats with chronic herpes virus. They continued giving it a week before a known stressor to help minimize symptoms and decrease duration. So I still discuss and prescribe L-lysine for cats with herpes virus. 500 milligrams twice a day, a week before a known stressor or during an active infection. I continue this for a few days after the symptoms have resolved. Some cats require a low maintenance dose and this can range from 250 milligrams once to twice daily. Since it is an amino acid supplement, it is generally safe for long-term use. You can get this anywhere and not all L-lysine is created equal. The FDA does not control this like a true medication and manufacturers do not have to show effectiveness or safety before selling it. I stick with a reputable veterinary source, quality matters. And just like with us, there are not many good antiviral medications. Sometimes we reach for an antiviral eye drop like idoxuridine. These are generally on the expensive side, have to be compounded, and need to be administered many times throughout the day. Some reach for the antiviral medication known as famcyclovir, which is used to treat herpes virus in humans. Studies suggest this medication also is effective against feline herpes virus. The best protection against feline herpes virus is the FVRCP vaccine. And just like with a flu shot with us, it will not prevent infection entirely, but it will decrease symptom severity and shorten illness duration. A little note about that FVRCP vaccine, it's not how many vaccines your kitten has had, but when the last vaccine was administered. We start at a very young age to train your kitten's immune system to recognize and attack the herpes virus with the very real likelihood they will come across the virus at some point in their life. At a very minimum, your kitten should have at least two FERCP vaccines three to four weeks apart. The last vaccine has to be given after four months of age and is typically administered between 16 and 20 weeks. In some kittens, antibodies from mom can hang around up to 20 weeks of age and interfere with the vaccine working correctly. Because of these maternal antibodies, the American Association of Feline Practitioners recommends that kittens receive an FERCP vaccine booster at six months of age. Since the virus is everywhere, it can be passed on without direct contact from an infected cat and flare-ups do occur. The FVRCP vaccine is considered a core vaccine for all cats, including indoor-only cats, and it will need to be boosted later in life, typically every one to three years. Interestingly, a probiotic known as Fortiflora, which is usually prescribed for cats with digestive issues, has shown to be effective against herpes virus. It's a powder that can be mixed in your cat's food and worth discussing with your vet. Know your cat triggers. If you can identify what causes the flare-up in your cat, you can avoid it, start supportive care earlier, or proactively begin L-lysine or Fortiflora if they help. 
Feline herpes virus is very common, but manageable. With the right care and a little detective work, you can help your cat feel better faster and help reduce how often they flare up. If you found this video helpful, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on my next video.